Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Overwatch In-Depth. I hope you enjoyed the new intro. That's going to be on every Overwatch In-Depth episode because this is a continuing series on the channel. Gotten a little lazy with it recently with all the new game releases, but today let's talk about Reaper, everybody's favorite edgelord and overall one of the most useful characters in the game. Good on offense, good on defense, good on every game mode, but we're going to be going over his damage statistics first. He fires shotguns that are hit scans that fire 20 pellets per shot, so they're not projectile you don't have to lead them, there's no arcing, there's no travel time. They're instant hit scans, so they just kill whatever you have them pointed at. And 20 pellets per shot is a colossal amount of shot in a shotgun. That's more like a birdshot load, except he's got some over-the-top kind of buckshot shotguns. Each one of these pellets will deal up to 7 damage up close and decrease down to 2 damage at a distance, meaning the maximum damage per shot is 140 up close and 40 at a distance, though at distances you're not going be hitting the entire shotgun load. I should also point off that damage decrease range is very very significant and outside of maybe five to ten meters you're going to be doing that minimum damage. I mean the damage drop on Reaper is very very fast so you want to be very very close to get these 140 damage shots. However he can also get headshots that deal double damage so the maximum headshot damage is 280. That's a lot of damage. That's enough to one shot May right in the mouth. That's enough to chunk tanks really quickly to nukes squishies. That is an absurd amount of damage, but that's what Reaper is, a pure DPS hero. His rate of fire is 60 rounds per minute, so he'll fire each one of the weapons at 30 rounds per minute alternatively, or basically one shot per second, giving him extremely high DPS potential of either 140 DPS per second with body shots, or 280 DPS per second with headshots. So Reaper just cranks out damage. Uh, his reload time is relatively slow at 1.5 seconds. The animation is very cool because he just throws his shotguns in the ground and pulls new ones out from under the coat, which is like El Mariachi style, but it's crazy, but it's fun. But in other games I would say that's a fast reload, but Overwatch has a lot of really fast reloads and minimal downtimes. That's relatively slow for this game. As we'll talk about more later, Reaper is essentially designed to destroy tanks. His DPS is so high, that is the most useful thing you can do with him is just murder the enemy's tanks, and he's a counter to most of the tanks in the game. But let's talk about his other damaging ability, which is Death Blossom. Death Blossom is one of the highest damage dealing abilities in the entire game. It'll deal 510 damage over 3 seconds in an 8 meter radius. The 8 meter radius might sound a little bit pitiful that you need to be 8 meters away from them to get hits, but if you think about it instead of a radius being 8 meters, you could think of it being a diameter of 16 meters, which is a whole huge area of Reaper Death Blossom coverage. And if you think about it, 510 damage over 3 seconds is a lot of DPS or damage per second. If you break it down, Death Blossom deals 170 damage per second. This gives squishies less than 1 second to escape, which means that unless they see you coming, unless they get shielded or they just have godlike reaction time, you're gonna nuke just about anybody with 200 or less health. Another thing to keep in mind is that Reaper's damage abilities get major buffs from Ana, who can nano boost Reaper that makes his primary weapons twice as powerful, it reduces the amount of damage he takes. He's kind of a slow moving character so you get bonus movement speed and that'll double the damage on his ultimate up to a thousand, so a nano boosted Reaper ult is basically like... This moves 20 miles miles to the west and you and everyone you know are dead all of you because you can't survive it it's not possible unless you're very very lucky and your kids die too and I'm not kidding. Truly, Ana's, instead of boosting Reinhardt's, which is great, by the way, and that's a good person to boost, Reaper has got to be my number two, and maybe situationally number one. A nano-boosted Reaper is a force to be reckoned with, literally like a hurricane as fast as he spins and as much damage as he puts out. I would like to point out that while Reaper's ultimate is extremely dangerous, it's not impossible to avoid or escape, and I think the best way to do that is disrupting it. There are a great number of ways to disrupt Reaper's ultimate. You can hit him with a flashbang from McCree, and he can't go anywhere. Roadhog can hook Reaper and cancel the ultimate. Ana can put him to sleep, which honestly is probably the most annoying one because it's the most amount of downtime you're going to get. If you have bad timing and you start ulting right into May's uh, spray or ultimate, you'll get frozen, which is not what you want to be, and Reinhardt can hammer down and put him to bed. A surprisingly useful one is that D.Va can use her particle barrier to just put herself in Reaper's face and cancel out the entire ultimate for the entire team. 
Okay, now that we've talked about the damaging abilities, let's back it on up a little bit and talk about the passive and the movement abilities. Reaper has a very useful passive which heals him for 50 health with each soul he collects. Anytime an enemy dies, whether you kill them or not, they drop a soul that show up as a little orb. If you get close to the orb, the orb will just go straight to you, into you, and you collect their soul and essence and heal yourself for 50 health instantly. There's no charge time, there's no wind up, there's no you know HPS, it's just as soon as you pick it up you heal. This means that Reaper, the longer he stays in combat, the more he heals himself, and he can be dangerous just after dropping an ultimate because he'll kill a couple people and even though he'll sop up some damage, you will be able to pick up 50 health for each person you kill and just heal yourself and keep on fighting. Wraith Form, which is a shift ability, grants additional movement speed and untarget ability for 3 seconds. This means that Reaper cannot take damage for 3 seconds, which is incredibly useful as an escape tool and it gives you a little bit of bonus movement speed. While he can't take damage, he can heal himself both off of the payload, from teammates, from picking up souls, or running over health packs, so there's pretty much no downside to going in Wraith Form except for the fact that you can't deal any damage. I think that Wraith Form is best used as an escape and it's often wasteful as an engage. I've seen some lesser experienced reapers hit shift and kind of go into a fight so that they can dodge the initial attack and try and set up so that they can hose somebody with shotguns at point blank. I think that's kind of wasteful because a lot of people see it and just wait for you to come out of wraith form and then you don't have any escape because again reaper is very low mobility and you're just kind of stuck in the fight until it's over. I think it's much much better to engage by dropping in, by flanking, by doing almost anything and then using the wraith form to back out and heal up and of course go back in. I'd also like to point out that there is a very minor delay between the time you hit the button and you actually go in the wraith form. I learned that the hard way in this clip because I heard the tire coming and I hit the button a millisecond before the tire hit there but there was a small wind up and I blew up. So please do use the wraith form not perfectly reactively. We're not doing Genji Reflex here, you know, we're not playing the most fast paced game on the planet. Use it just a smidge preemptively and you will be fine. Reaper's only movement ability, Shadow Step, is a teleport ability. Shadow Step, or default E on PC, can teleport Reaper up to 35 meters, which is a very significant distance. This can go up, down, across barriers, uh, chasms, anything you don't... All you, If you have a direct line of sight, you can teleport straight to it, and it takes two seconds to cast. That's truly the downside to this move, is that the cast time can be somewhat slow, and during the cast time, Reaper is extremely vulnerable. You can shoot him as he's teleporting, and shortly after he's teleported and get a ton of damage in or you could just put junk rat traps around him You can do a lot of really cruel things to Reaper if you catch him teleporting However, this move is really his bread and butter more than the shotguns because it allows you to be the flanking champion that Reaper was designed to be You can use this to get close to snipers to get close to healers to flank around the map to get elevation you can even sometimes outrace other champions with this. If you're desperate enough to do it, it can work. The other downside is that he gives a very, very loud call out. He has audio cues when he teleports both for your team and the enemy team. So if you're teleporting too close to enemies, anybody wearing headsets or pay attention to the, paying attention to the audio cues will hear you and they'll just call out, hey, I just heard Reaper teleport somewhere, you better be careful. So in my experience, it's better not to teleport directly close to them, but just a little bit further away so they can't hear you or teleport quite as clearly, then you can go in and kill everybody. Now, back to what Reaper was designed to be. Reaper is designed to be a tank destroyer, but he can also destroy unwary DPS heroes. He's pretty much a low mobility, super high DPS monster with a decent sustain built in. And while yes, you can blow up Mercy and Symmetra and even Lucio in just a couple of shots, he was really designed to be the character that deals with Winston, that takes out Reinhardt, that chunks away at D.Va. He just destroys these characters, and that's where he's best used at. Let your other DPS heroes worry about the healers, you just worry about cutting down the tank so that they don't have any front line. He also performs best when flanking and not walking in direct head-to-head -head engagements because the only sort of defensive ability he has is the Wraith form, which once it's wasted, that's, well, you're screwed because you have no escape. So you really need to be flanking with Reaper. You don't need to be charging in, you don't need to be behind Reinhardt's shield, you don't need to be visible. You need to be shooting people in the back and deleting them from the map. That is truly 
your number one asset to the team. The only time you really want to go head to head is when you have Death Blossom ready. That's just because you want to delete everybody. Reaper is incredibly strong against Winston and Roadhog because Reaper will out DPS Roadhog with a little bit of healing. You can out sustain him. And he's pretty much the number one counter in the game to Winston. He'll murder Symmetra because Symmetra has to get well within the one shot range or one or two shot range in order to deal any damage. So he's very good at dealing with her. However, he is weak to Farah, McCree, and Soldier 76. Six. Essentially, any character that's long range or has some kind of poke or disable is very good at dealing with Reaper. Guys, that's all for this episode of Overwatch In Depth. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out. Off the game. Oh.